What is up everybody, it's The Don with The Don Tech, and today I wanted to show you how to upgrade a MacBook Pro from a mechanical hard drive to an SSD, how to do the install of the drive itself, how to install the operating system, and to get you up and going to make your machine overall faster. Now this will primarily apply to people that have MacBook Pros that are from the 2013 or older generation. This one right here is about a mid 2012 generation. And so I'm gonna be replacing it with a 250 gig Samsung traditional SSD and just the traditional two and a half inch format drive. So similar with anything else, when you're gonna be opening up a machine and working on it, you wanna make sure of two things. The first one is you always wanna to touch an extra piece of metal on a computer case or something like that. You wanna ground yourself essentially. So not by going to your room, even though I'm in my room right now, but grounding yourself by going to uh, something metal, touching it, boom, you're grounded and you don't have to worry about it. If you feel paranoid and you wanna wear an anti-static wrist wrap, you can. Uh, it's not really necessary as long as you know what you're doing. So this one here was already opened. It has the 10 screws around it. They're just standard Phillips head screws themselves. I've got those taken out and placed somewhere else. And we can go ahead and place that to the side over there. So when you're inside the machine, this is you know obviously what it really should look like. If your machine does not look like this and does not have something that resembles this for the hard drive, stop and do not go any further because you probably have that stick of gum looking solid state drive and you will not be able to perform the upgrade. But if you're curious about it, still keep watching. It's a pretty simple process. The next thing that you wanna do before you actually go through and tamper with anything else inside the machine is you wanna disconnect the battery. There's a little battery that's just kind of clipped in right here and you just kind of push it out with your nail and it will come detached from the logic board itself and bada bing bada boom, we've got the battery free. So when it's gonna be coming down to actually removing the hard drive itself, this is again, a very simple process and you just go through and you just need a Phillips head screwdriver and you go ahead and just take out, there's gonna be two screws holding in this top bracket right here and they will actually not come out of the bracket. Usually they should stay right in. So you just loosen them enough and then the bracket itself can just come right off, boom, hang on to this, you're gonna need it. And then the hard drive itself comes right up. Here's a little plastic tab. It almost looks like I'm doing a Gaussian blur kind of thing, but this is just a little plastic lift up tab and you go ahead and just pull this up and that will be able to release the drive a little bit more. Careful when you're moving it because there is gonna be a hard drive cable that's connected right down here. Carefully remove that from the top here from the SATA and data ports. It just kind of slides out and boom, you're safe. That can set back in it and then you've got the drive free itself. If you have to get any data off of this drive, be very careful in the way that you handle it. This drive is dead, so I did, it doesn't matter how I touch it, how I squish it, how I mold it or anything like that, it's a dead drive. The next step is gonna be removing four total screws, two on the top and then two on the bottom. Those are gonna be using a T5 screw, I believe. You're gonna keep these screws nearby because we're gonna use them in the exact next step. So I'm just gonna place them on top of the CD drive here. The thing that you will end up losing is this little tab here. You can always try to take it off and put it on your other drive, but usually the stick just isn't really there. It just kind of comes right off. So that doesn't really matter. That's just to help the Mac technicians pull it out, I guess, if you don't really know what you're doing, but you don't need it. So the drive, this is your old drive. You don't need it. The next step is going to be getting the solid state drive out itself. You open this, bada bing, bada boom. And so what you're going to end up doing is the same, pretty much the reverse of what you just did. So you just took these four screws off. The next step is putting the four screws in the four holes that are on the side. So you only have those options, you can't put them anywhere else. And if you're dealing with a solid state drive, do not worry about how much pressure you're putting on it. You wanna treat it like a delicate piece of equipment anyway, but how much pressure you put is not necessarily as big of a deal because you're not really gonna harm it in that way. Once you've got those four screws installed, you just have to line up the power and the SATA connection with the power and SATA connection on the very delicate hard drive cable. So power and data, and then you've got power and data, It'll just go in one way. You can't really mess that up all that much. It goes in and then you're gonna slide in these two bottom screws with these two mount placements right down there. It'll just go right in. There's just little holes in there and then it'll allow the solid state drive to just lay flat right there. You have this little bar right here. This is going to hold the second set of screws in place on the other side. And really there's a little foam mount right there little foam on it right there, that kind of lines up with the hard drive cable itself. So you just go ahead and line that up. It's really only gonna go in one way comfortably. If it doesn't fit and if the screws don't line up, just flip it around and then you can get it in from there. And then it's in. So just like that, you've already got the solid state drive installed. So that's about as simple of an upgrade that you can do. I really like having, if I'm training people or it's one of their first days on the job, I love if I have this available to show them how to do that and get them to do that. Cause there's something daunting about replacing a MacBook 
part of any regard until you do it a couple of times then it just becomes easy like second nature and if you haven't seen lewis rossman's channel i mean geez oh pete's that guy does it he does way intense stuff and he's super super comfortable and probably one of the best guys you can see replacing macbooks internal components so the next step after that very simple you just got to make sure you plug the battery back in and when you've got the machine open, it's also very simple to go ahead and upgrade the RAM itself if you want to, replace the battery if you need to. All those are really simple. I just don't have those parts, so we're gonna leave well enough alone. Then the final piece of the puzzle is just getting back the metal casing itself, put it back on in the right orientation, put in the screws as you need. I'm gonna leave those open for now because I don't feel like doing that at this exact moment. So I'm just gonna hold it while I flip it and boom, we're on to the next stage. So this is the part that gets really fun when you find out that the machine itself has encountered some sort of liquid spill and the keyboard doesn't really respond. So with that, you need to get your old handy dandy non-Mac keyboard. This is just a standard PC keyboard connected to USB and it's going to allow me to go ahead and boot into different ways. So there's two different ways to boot into repairing the operating system itself and rebooting the operating system. One is gonna be the internet recovery, which is gonna consist of holding down the option key, command key, and R on boot up, and that will open up to the internet recovery. Now, if your machine is a certain age, older, it will not do that. And you'll have to have something like a flash drive, and that's what this is right here. This flash drive has a mountain lion boot installer to it, and that's what it actually booted to right here. So the flash drive itself is booting to OSX utilities, and this will allow us to format our hard drive as we need to. So you go just to disk utility. It'll show the drives that are in there. We have a 250 gig Samsung SSD. We're gonna go ahead and go to the erase tab, and I just like naming this Mac OS. And then you name it, you hit erase, erase, and then it'll format to the journaled format for a Mac. Easy enough, exit out of that, go to reinstall the OSX, continue. It's gonna do 10.8, agree, yes I agree go down, you hit your drive itself, so that's gonna be this 250 gig drive that we named Mac OS, it'll be whatever you named it. Hit okay, boom, it'll prepare to install. So another way of doing the install is gonna be using your Time Machine backup. I myself have no experience with that and don't desire to learn anything about it, but if you know how to use it and you want to, that's another method you can use, and that will presumably put everything back the way that it was. If you do a fresh install like this and you do not have the latest version of the operating system, you are going to want to upgrade in the uh, App Store area to upgrade to the latest version, Right now, this one that's being installed is 10.8, and the latest one is 10.12, which is going to be Sierra. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you disliked it and you don't like any performance, give it a dislike. Share this with your friends if they're interested in seeing how they can easily upgrade the performance in their Mac to help it last longer and just run a lot better, because who doesn't want that? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you want to have any questions or discussions about what went on in this video. Tweet me any of your questions as well. I've got a new series coming up that's going to have me discussing these questions in a short form video factor. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, the Don's got your back.